Dr. Blair Kerner and I'm the bassoon professor at Syracuse University's Setner School of Music. So today's topic is called Concert Piece for Bassoon and Strings by Burl Phillips. This is actually an original bassoon piece that was written in the 1900s. Burl Phillips was a theorist and composer. He was professor actually at Eastman School of Music, my, my alma mater, as well as Juilliard and a few other places. This piece was actually written while he was at Eastman and was uh, published there. So at the bottom you can actually see copyrighted at the Eastman School of Music. So this piece is pretty funky in style. It's probably a little bit different than some of the other repertoire that you've played, and we want to embrace that. So there's three things that we're gonna be talking about today. First is that style. So kind of how do you approach this piece stylistically? Two is a rhythm shift that happens halfway through that I want to bring your attention to. And three is all the accidentals. <laughs> all right, the style. So this style, um, is syncopated in some places, it bounces off of the upbeat. So from the very beginning, we have this upbeat feeling. So rather than starting on the downbeat or one, we start on the upbeat. 
Um, so you have to count that carefully and you have to embrace that so you get that feeling of da ba ba, more of a pickup into the next measure. In addition to that, the style of this is bouncy, it's fast. So light articulations, accenting where the accents are provided, um, moving it forward, well, what not rushing, um, will all help bring the style across. So I'm gonna read this in just like a plain text, you know, no style incorporated. I'm just gonna read it, straight, you know, first few measures, and then add a little bit of those specifics that we just mentioned. <laughs> a little bit of the rhythm in there that's starting to push you into something I would call a little bit more funky. So embrace that. So think about them as pickups. So ba 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 ba, leaning into the G at rehearsal number two, adding in the accents, and then also keeping your tongue nice and crisp. <laughs> section which is more melodic and beautiful you can calm down the tonguing a little bit and think more of the longer phrase and add the vibrato but once you get back into this definitely bring back that spunkiness keep it moving forward keep the tongue light add the accents um, uh, the accents be careful of accenting too hard to cause cracking um, so anything like that where it just it pops out a little bit too much and isn't a beautiful sound. So practice accenting at different notes. Okay, balancing that out so that it becomes a part of the whole without sticking out too much. So that's the stylistic thing about this. The next is the rhythm uh, shift I want to bring your attention to. So we just played the beginning here, the melody, the theme, which, you know, if we think of it as a pickup into two, ba 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 da ba, the first note that is accented is that A, as if we're aiming for that A. However, when the theme returns, changing my page here, when the theme returns on the third page, um, right after 10, where we have the 2-4, something shifts. So that A that we had before with the accent that originally was on an upbeat is now on a downbeat. So we add in a little extra turn, but ba da da and when that happens, it shifts the placement of the A off by an eighth note. Be careful. We've got that theme so ingrained in our head that when we come to this part, we actually might want to try to play it that way, but you can't. So be very mindful that it does purposefully shift. So keep that internal rhythm going. Practice with a metronome so that you can actually play it appropriately. Again. <laughs> So that's the rhythm shift I would like to bring your attention to, um, mainly because it just keeps happening very similarly as the beginning. But ba da da, ba ba da da keeps being added, and therefore the placement of that note they always gets shifted a little bit. So just be wary of that. The last thing I want to bring your attention to is just simply the accidentals. This piece doesn't have a key. This is very common in contemporary music where we play around with different key signatures by combining them in different unique ways. And in this case, we just don't have any originally. And there's lots of sharps and flats that get thrown in here. Be very mindful of these notes. Think about when they carry through the measure. So make sure to add them through the measures so that if they are appear again later that you, you do that. Make sure to acknowledge some of the unique different sharps and flats. For instance, on the third page, we have a C flat. So think about what that note would be. Um, so you're just gonna have to get used to reading a lot of these accidentals um, because they're not in a key signature. We don't have really a key signature for this. So be, be mindful, 
listen to my version, listen to other versions out there. I know that Saul Schallenbach played this. So, you know, go and listen to this and get it ingrained in your head so you know that you're playing the correct notes because it is not the most predictable of things. And that's pretty common for this, this uh, genre and for this era. So embrace that and make sure that you really are aware of when these accidentals appear. Okay, quick review. So we have three things to talk about. First is the style. Get excited, this is a fun piece, it's bouncy, so keep the tongue in light, keep the energy high, have your accents. Number two, be aware of the rhythm shift, so when the melody comes back, that theme comes back on the third page, it's changed just a little bit, so you have to be mindful of that. And last but not least, be very aware of your accidentals, so you know exactly what notes you're supposed to be playing when and where. All right, that's all we have today for Concert Piece by Beryl Phillips. Go practice.